uh, welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, so uh, as per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, uh, commented, liked, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, big, big thank you. Um, so, today, uh, this this week, uh, it's um, time for another Aaron tasting, and, um, well, no apologies for that. Uh, I think this is probably the sixth episode of the show I've done on Aaron, and... Uh, why not? I, <laughs> I I love Aaron. I mean, it is a, it is a lovely whiskey. And um, there's two reasons, I guess, uh, for doing uh, an episode of the show on Aaron. Firstly, as you can see from the uh, the title page, the the bottles have changed. Um, they've had, ooh, what's that horrible marketing term, a brand refresh. And to be honest with it, um, I quite like them, the bottles, actually. They're very different to, to the old Aaron bottlings, which I loved, you know, almost kind of, you know, I love the sort of like the tall neck, obviously symbolising the sort of um, the, the Aaron stills. And, um, but, you know, as, as you know, distilleries from time to time feel the necessity to, uh, you know, brand refresh. <laughs> um, and, um, well... What was, the, what was the reason behind this? Well, I shall read you the official reason uh, given by uh, Jimmy McTee himself, and that is, with the opening of our second distillery at Lag, it felt like the right time to make a clear distinction between the unique and very different spirits produced at each of our island homes. We've taken inspiration from the elements that make La Cranza so special uh, to produce a unique and beautiful new pack which does justice to the liquid it contains. Now, it's probably not the worst bit of marketing guff I've ever heard in my life, but it did kind of set my marketing guff sensors on, on edge, it has to be said. Um, why do you need a clear and distinct difference between um, Aaron and Lag when Lag is about three years away, at, at least from bottling anything? Um, so, is there actually more to this than meets the eye? And of course, like, like a lot of the times, there is indeed. And well, eagle-eyed viewers will realise that there is no 14-year-old anymore. Um, the 14, unfortunately, has been now discontinued because, well, you know how some distilleries have quiet periods. They maybe get mothballed for a few years and then come back on stream and they have gaps in their um, uh, their inventory. Well, well, obviously, that doesn't apply to Aaron because Aaron has been in production ever since it started almost 20 odd, what, 20, 21, 20, almost 25 years ago now, I mean, oh, where the hell does the time go, it has to be said, um, so why is there gaps in their inventory, well, the, the obvious reason is because they sold off too many casks about, <laughs> about 14 years ago, you know, um, and as I've said on, on numerous occasions, running a distillery is a bit like sort of gazing into a crystal ball, trying to figure out what, how popular your whiskey is going to be, you know, in 5, 10, 15 years' time, how much stock are you going to need, all that kind of stuff, you know, so how much stock can we sell off, you know, that kind of thing. It's all a balancing act, and occasionally distilleries cock it up, and, well, Aaron have cocked it up. Um, so, hmm, here we have a bit of an issue, um, because... Are we going to suddenly jump from, say, the 10-year-old straight up to the 18-year-old? Um, what's to be done? And um, I'll give Jimmy McTee his due. He's been pretty clever when it comes to sort of figuring this little uh, issue out. Um, so what they've done is they've shoehorned in at the, the start of the range a new no-age statement bottling called the Barrel Reserve. Now, that's not the only thing basically so okay yeah you can stick in a no age statement but it still kind of leaves a bit of a void between you know um between 10 and um and 18 um not just in in an age statement way but in um a stylistic fashion as well because as we know most distilleries have a kind of a plan for their range you know and in many uh instances that basically means 
entry level bottling tends to be all American oak, showcase the distillery character and as you get a little bit older you start vacking in a little bit more sherry cask, you get a little bit more spice, you know change the character subtly and that's exactly what Aaron used to do. Um, now here we get to the contentious bit because um, the distillery doesn't tend to sort of give an awful lot away it has to be said and I personally haven't spoken to Jimmy McTeer about this, we're, we're not you know, best buds, as they say. <laughs> um, I don't mean that in a disparaging way, uh, if you get what I mean. Yeah, uh, so a lot of the time, I'm kind of working in, in the dark. Yes, I can sort of um, speak to the, 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 the brand rep and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, distilleries are notoriously difficult to get information out. So, now, I've now been led to believe that there was some sherry cask in the original 10 year old. Now I kind of, now either I'm crap at tasting because I could never pick up sherry notes at all in the old 10 year old and I was always under the impression it's 100% bourbon. So if that was the case that maybe there was 20 or 30% sherry, let's just go along with that, shoehorning in 100% uh, American oak aged no age statement bottling makes an awful lot of sense. Then, what do you do with the 10 year old? Aha, right. So now you do use some sherry, and you, if you say, for example, uh, I believe the, the old um, 14 was possibly 50 50 sherry American oak, you now vat in a little bit more sherry, and I believe the 10 year old has now got between a 30-40% sherry casks used in the vatting. Now you're probably, and before we get any further, you're probably wondering, I've got seven samples here. Um, that is because I've got two samples of the 10 year old and we will get onto that and the ooh, batch variation business when we get around to tasting it. So that's going to be really interesting and I'll explain the reasoning why I'm doing it as well. Anyway, so basically now we've got the situation where, okay, we haven't got the age statement, but we're now kind of shuffled up the, um, the stylistic um, uh, air part of the range. So the, the jump between 10-year-old and 18-year-old, because as far as I'm aware, and if you look at the colour of the 18-year-old, it's really dark, is 100% sherry matured, and I would guess a lot of either active casks or first fill Oloroso casks. Um, but then you have the 21, which may or may not be 100% sherry. There may well be some American oak in there, certainly looking at the colour, you would assume so, unless they use a lot more refill sherry butts in this one. Again, I, these are all suppositions and, you know, when the distillery doesn't actually physically say, oh, this is what this is made of X, Y and Z, you know, you kind of have to sort of go along with, with that. And um, so, is it an issue? Um, is it a problem that, that the 10 year old has been messed around with? I mean, a lot of people love the old 10 year old um, and that means that the barrel reserve has got a big, big boots to fill in that flavour profile because as we know American oak aged Aaron is gorgeously fruity it's voluptuous yeah and 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 tropical and yeah you lose a little bit of that as it gets older and you start putting in some sherry but you you get some spiciness and and you know I've, I've always loved the Aaron range. I mean, all right, there's been one or two that I've not been a big fan of. The Portwood finish is the one that springs to mind, but we're not talking about the finishes, although we have got the, um, uh, essentially, I've got the, the entire current range, which is really cool. And before I go on, a big thank you to the lovely Sarah at uh, Indie Brands for all the samples. And while we're talking about that, I, honestly, I will get on to tasting these in a minute, honestly. Um, just to let you know that if you want to taste the, the brand spanking new Aaron range, we are having an Aaron evening. The lovely Sarah will be with us on uh, April the 22nd. And I don't know whether, I'm hoping that we will have something a little bit... Um, under the table possibly uh, that you may or may not be able to get your mitts on um, can't say for definite whether we will or not but we're, ha we're hopefully working on that but you know you will definitely get to taste some or all of these bottlings on that particular evening so uh, there are not many tickets left in actual fact that shows you how popular Aaron is with uh, with our customers so um, 
if you want to get your hands on a ticket, be quick. Anyway, right, I think I've waffled an awful lot, but I'm going to have to waffle a little bit more because I'm going to have to introduce <laughs> the lineup. So um, bear with me, and we will taste some whiskey in due course. <laughs> Okay, so, as I said at uh, the earlier part of the show, we're going to kick off with the brand spanking new no-age statement Barrel Reserve. 100% American oak, uh, and I'm pretty confident in saying that, um, uh, and bottled at 43%. Then we're going to move on to the 10-year-old. Uh, like I said, this is um, age, uh, well, age, <laughs> age for 10 years. Duh. Um, it's... Uh, <laughs> Like I said, possibly uh, uh, now uh, a vatting of American oak and sherry casks. Uh, I would guess, well, like I said, anywhere between 30 and 40 percent, I would have thought, and bottled at 46 percent. Uh, the next bottling we'll be looking at is uh, the new quarter cask. Now, this replaced the the the. Uh, um, the bottling that was originally called the Bothy because nobody understood what the hell the Bothy was all about so um, they've kind of well they haven't they've dropped the name from the label they're still using it on the website but it is now just called the Quart Cask so uh, a, 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 a sort of an unspecified amount of time in I'm, I'm guessing that this is exactly the same as the Bothy the old Bothy bottlings were an unspecified amount of time in American Oak and about 18 months in uh, quarter casks so we will assume that nothing has changed there um, and it's bottled at 56.2% uh, then we're going to look at another new bottling that they've shoehorned into the range called the sherry cask um, and judging from the colour it obviously um, it's been matured in sherry casks um, it's bottled at 55.8% and again it doesn't carry an age statement it's a bit of an odd one to sort of stick in but well there you go that's um, that's that's Aaron for you I suppose uh, and then we're going to move on to the new 18 year old now like I said as far as I'm aware it's still a hundred percent sherry casks uh, and judging from the color I think that would be uh, that would be pretty much a, a spot-on observation um, and lastly we're going to look at the new 21 year old which uh, if it's anything as good as the, uh, the first release of the 21 year old it's going to be bloody good um, so and that's bottled at 46% right okay so I spoke <laughs> waffled as quickly as I possibly could because um, this could end up being a bit of a long episode so uh, let's kick off with a bit of barrel reserve then shall we right, okay. let's see what the next percent shall we Do you know what? That is a gorgeous nose. Um, I mean, Aaron gets away with being bottled young generally because of its estuary fruity nature, and it's all on display here. Um, apricot, pear, pineapple, a little bit of toffee, a um, little bit of a little bit of coffee as well. Just a sort of, sort of Swedish kind of coffee, um, barley fresh American oak, um, I mean that is just just absolutely gorgeous as a, a late spiciness and a little bit of uh, coastal saltiness as well, I mean you know it is just an all round gorgeous nose, there's also a little twang of green fruit as well, sort of slightly limey green gaugey kind of thing and um, really complex for 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 an eight well one assumes um six to eight year old uh spirit lovely let's see what the power side intense salty full you can tell it's young because the finish is a little on the short side. Um, still got that lovely, less estuary, intense estuary fruit, but still got that lovely fruitiness. And more in the white fruit ends, almost kind of lychee pear kind of notes. There's a little bit of, a little bit of unsweetened pineapple, touch of spice, a little bit of toffee. Um, 
I would have preferred, I would have liked to have seen that at 46% and non chill filtered because obviously it's been chill filtered because it's less than 46%. Um, it's still got a lovely intensity um, and I don't think the chill filtering has, has harmed it per se, but I I can see why it's, it's been done to keep the alcohol level down, to keep the price point down, just to sort of, you know, shoo, shoo it in at the sort of um, mid-30s, uh, I would have, you know, I'm just trying to remember what retailer for, and I think it's around about mid-30s. Um, certainly the 10-year-old has now gone up to about sort of 40-odd quid, uh, which was a shame because that was 39.95, and that was, but, you yeah, know, these things happen. And... Um, so yeah, I can see why why it's been done, and I still think that is a beautiful whiskey, even though it's been filtered and bottled at forty three percent. Right. Okay. So now we're moving on to the ten year old, and um, let's talk about batch variation. We know it happens. Uh, whiskey is a living organism, um, and no two batches are ever going to be alike and normally it's not an issue well I'm not saying it's an issue now but normally I'll kind of like I'll get a sample of a new release or what have you I'll taste it and and write my notes and go yep okay that's what it tastes like and then maybe I'll come back and taste it again in a few years time when you know it's definitely another batch you know it's going to be a little bit of difference to it um, and sometimes you don't really notice the difference because it's been so long since you last tasted it it's very rarely that I will taste the same whiskey in a very, very short period of time that's obviously come from two batches and obviously has a difference. So anyway, well, this was, um, shall we say, Sarah's sample, because uh, this was the sample that Sarah had. Um, now, the sherry is very noticeable. I mean, I'm not saying it's a monster. I'm just saying that when you go from the, from the, uh, the, 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 the barrel reserve to this, you know you notice the sherry component, um, but it's still got some lovely estuary fruit. It's got more maturity, there's more barley. Um, it's quite rich and spicy. Um, and the tropical fruit is still definitely noticeable. Um, and and given, a, uh, given a little bit of time, there's some spices, some buttery American oak, maybe not quite so toffee a little bit more buttery um, but overall that is absolutely wonderfully balanced now I'm not going to taste this one yet because I'm going to nose this particular sample um, because this sample has more sherry I mean if I was going to sort of give a percentage I would say this one smells more like 30% ish and this is more 40% ish either that or what I would imagine is probably there's been more active sherry butts have been used because I mean you know I'm assuming that, that, that Jimmy McTee uh, sits in his laboratory and puts the blend together um, and, and then the cask is selected you know it'll be x number of this type of cask x number of that etc etc and then the, the batches will just carry on rolling on um, I don't know whether whether Jimmy then sort of samples or has a taste sample of every batch possibly um, and but there's definite difference here. I mean, it's within, I would say, acceptable parameters. It's not like, you know, this has suddenly become a complete sherry monster, but this is a lot more heavier on the sherry. Um, a lot more dried fruit. Um, less of the, of the tropical notes, to be honest with you. Um, it's more spice. Um, I mean, yes, there is tropical notes there, and I'm not really getting a great deal of of that sort of buttery American oak that I got on the first one and all I'm just all I'm basically saying is that this is very different from um, that this the first batch that, I, that I've got here you know this is this is actually a uh, from a bottle from our um, from you know, our own stock um, anyway let's, let's see what the palette's like on this one shall we rich nutty kicks off with that sort of relatively subtle oloroso um dried fruit then comes the uh, the estuary pineapple apricot um and then finally coming through is that lovely creamy 
slightly toppy American oak. I mean, that is a gorgeous whiskey. I mean, the progression is absolutely beautiful. Um, but when, you know, I'll now taste the, the, the second of the 10 year olds, in, but <laughs> do you know which one you're going to get? Uh, I mean, is this one going to be completely different on the palate? Certainly the nose was, was a lot more sherry influenced. So let's have a look. There's a lot more tannins back. I can taste a lot more sherry, there's a lot more spices, tannins, a lot less fruit, or a lot less estuary fruit. Um, still really long, and I certainly don't get that American oak kick coming through. The progression isn't quite as pronounced on this particular batch because the sherry is slightly heavier and it is a little bit more kind of dominating the spirit. Not to say that I think it's in hugely in a bad way and of course the point being is if I'd have tasted either of these in isolation I'd have gone okay yep good good whiskey and, you know my personal preference is obviously for the, the the first of the two 10 year old bottlings but of course you don't know what you're going to get you know uh, in in your batch so um, yeah uh, don't quite know what my conclusion is with that particular one but I just thought it would be interesting just to show you how how significant batch variation can be right, okay so let's move on to the quarter cask uh, this is bottled at 56.2 percent let's see where the nose goes oh yeah that's there's a lot of oak there um that's quite gritty and and tannic and there's a lot of sawn oak and I, I don't remember the bothy being quite as intense on the oak um, I mean I did actually have a, have a quick look at one of the earlier uh, YouTube videos I did when I, uh, I did it and I did go mm, lots of oak but lots of fruit and um, I don't get quite so much fruit I don't get quite so much esteriness I'm getting a lot more oak um, There is a little bit of white licorice, a little bit of, uh, uh, of, of apricot, a little bit of, of pear. Um, what, once it's kind of settled down, I get I'm, loads of oak, loads of tight sawn oak. Um, I wonder whether this has actually spent a little bit longer in the quarter casks um, than the, uh, the, the bothy did. Um, or maybe these quarter casks were a little bit more active, I don't know. But it's a certainly given it a lot more oak character and I'm also getting a sort of or uh, almost kind of like um, burnt toffee bourbon -y sort of kind of character as well um, and, and although I think it's interesting I'm I don't really warm to this as much as I did the, the old bothy bottlings it has to be said um, anyway let's see what pass on Lots of tannin, lots of grittiness, lots of American oak, lots of, of rye-like spice um, and not a huge amount of fruit uh, and distillery character. It come, kind of comes through on the end. I'm getting a little bit of apricot and, and possibly some tangerine. Um, but, I mean, that really is a mouthful of oak. Um, I'm going to put a little drop of water with it and see whether that does indeed tame the oak a little bit but I must admit I wouldn't quite go as far as saying it's it's wholly imbalanced I don't I don't love this bottling as much as I love the uh, the old bothy ones um, okay yeah now I'm getting more vanilla now now the water has kind of brought out the vanillins um, it's giving me more white fruit it's probably a little bit more interesting it's a little perfumed um, but the oak has certainly settled down. It's certainly taken the edge off the grittiness and the, the kind of like the rawness. Um, that sort of tangerine note that I caught on the palate has kind of metamorphosed into a sort of a slight marmalady note on the nose now. Um, so we'll pass on now. A 
little bit tight on the finish, although it's not quite so gritty. It, it's certainly um, still quite oak centric, obviously. Uh, there's a little bit more vanilla, um, a little bit more fruit, but the oak is still very, very noticeable. It's starting to bitter now quite a bit on the aftertaste. Um, which is not an issue, it has to be said, but for me, like I said, it feels like there's a little bit um, too much oak in on, on this. And, you know, like I said, uh, I mean, I love American oak aged whiskies, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm more interested in, in balance. And although this is not a totally unbalanced whiskey, the balance is skewed more towards the, more towards the oak. And I suppose you'd be thinking, well, it's been finished in quarter cast what do you expect but I really don't I think this lacks the finesse of the old bothy bottlings that has to be said <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the sherry cask. This is bottled at 55.8%. Ooh, guess what? Sherry! Uh, and lots of it. Um, dates, fig, prune, walnut, dried fruit, touch of burnt spice, where is the fruit? I mean, um, it's it's just a sherry monster, you know. And yes, I know there's a lot of you that love these kind of bottlings, and but you know, it's like, well, you know, does that say Aaron to me? No, not at all. Um, it, it is it's pretty young. Um, again, I would probably guess a sort of no older than eight, probably more more close to six, I would have thought. Um, might even be younger than that. There's a slight um, rose petaly ma kind of note, a little spiritiness, just kind of poking through, which says, um, uh, I, I'm pretty young. Um, yeah, there's a saltiness, but, you know, it's it, it's all sherry at the end of the day. Um, so it parts on. Soft, silky, but just in essence, just again, all sherry. A um, little bit of burnt toffee, a um, little bit of herbal spice, uh, dried fruit, um, treacle. Quite a, quite a herbal finish in actual fact, quite whiny, herbally, almost kind of, almost sort of moving into a wine. I mean, I know sherry is a wine at the end of the day, um, but you kind of, you know what I mean. Um, I don't really think it needs any water. I'm going to put a little drop of water just to see what that does to it. Um, I don't think it's probably going to do a great deal. And make, it's not going to suddenly have a great revelation. Um, no, uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. Um, it's maybe brought out a little bit more sort of tangerine sort of fruit, possibly, um, sort of marmalade There's a bit more coastal notes, but it, and, and I suppose less tannic. It's a bit more... I wouldn't quite say homogenous, but uh, um, it's kind of, you know, sherry, a little bit of salt, a little bit of ma, mm, you know, anyway, palate. Okay, it's a little less raw on the palate, a um, little less spirity, a bit more rounder there's a bit more treacle but and the, maybe the bitterness is not quite so intense but it's still there and there's 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 a bit of um quite a bit of tannin and it's young and um it's sherried and um let's move on to the next bottle <laughs> right okay so let's move on to the 18 year old now like 100 percent sherry Let's see where the nose get us. Now, yes, there was a lot of sherry there. Um, a lot of treacle, a lot of herbal, uh, oloroso. 
and it's probably heavier on the sherry than I remember the 18 to be. Um, I'm really searching for some fruit here and there, there feels like there is a, a little bit of tropical fruit in the background. Um, it's got a lovely maturity. Um, but again, I'm... Now, I'll let you into a little secret here. Ordinarily, I will have tasted all of these samples beforehand, so I know kind of what I'm getting myself into. I know what I'm expecting. But um, because literally um, Sarah turned up in the uh, at, uh, at work uh, yesterday with these samples, I haven't had the chance to taste either the 18 or the new 21. So I'm kind of like, you know, I don't know quite what to expect. And... Um, It's kind. Of, it's certainly taking a bit of time to get going. It has to be said. I'm, I am getting a little bit of, of toasty oak now, a little bit of, 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 of vanilla, um, and it's got a lovely maturity. There is some mature fruit there, but it is really, really heavy on the sherry. And I don't remember the 18-year-old being quite so he heavy on the sherry, although it was sherry orientated. It's not. I'm not loving this as much as what I did the old 18 year old, it has to be said. Um, yeah, there's lots of, well not, there's a bit of spice, there's a bit of raisinated fruit and... Yeah, I'm going, mm, yeah. Anyway, let's see what the pass like. drying tannic licorice prune almond walnut really nutty quite coffeed I really want some fruit there at the end I really do because I remember the old 18 year old was was just superbly balanced it had yes a lot of sherry character but there was a lot of Aaron as well and I'm guessing that the old 18 year old maybe had a little bit more refill um, sherry cashews and and this to me is just just a little too sherry centric I, I'm, I'm not quite getting the balance and it's um, it's I won't quite go as far as saying disappointing but I really don't I really don't love this as much as what I did previously um, and um, that's a bit of a shock it has to be said. And finally, let's move on to the 21 year old. Let's see what those give us on this end, shall we? Mm. Oh, thank God for that. Um, that is that is gorgeous. I mean, that is just mature, coastally salty, or oh, mature estuary fruit, or, well, not necessarily so estuary now, because the maturity takes that estuary kind of character. Uh, off it it's got macerate apricot it's got a little bit of grilled nuts um old tangerine apple pineapple i mean that is just if you can imagine mature fruit salad uh with a little bit of sherry spice um oh thank god i mean i i, I wanted to do uh, yeah um, I loved the, the 21, the, the first release of the 21, and, um, and this is just, this is, yeah, mm, absolutely stunning. Um, it's just sublimely balanced. That is what, where it's at. It's the, the, the balance that just does it for me, you know. Oh, stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, let's see what that's like. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, that's 
just gorgeous. I mean, that is just absolutely sublime. I mean, it's juicy, it's soft, it opens up with, with mature tropical fruits, um, a little bit of American oak, a little bit of mature American oak, not quite that sawdusty American oak, but mature American oak nevertheless. In comes a little bit of sherry spice, mature sherry cast, dusty, a little bit of coastal uh, uh, character, a um, little bit of coffee. Uh, I mean, the length on that is just absolutely stunning. I mean, that is a beautiful whiskey, and um, it really kicks the 18-year-old butt, it has to be said. Um, I mean, that is just absolutely sublime, and... Mmm! Mm. Okay, so that, let's wrap today's episode of the show up. Well, um, a big, big thank you to both Aaron and to Indie Brands for the samples for today's episode of the show. Uh, I, I, I appreciate the support, and um, I'm, I'm hoping that. Um, that, well, this episode of the show is, is just kind of like, you know, not disappointed uh, you. I mean, um, certainly um, you you guys know my opinions with regards to balance and sherry casks. And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to change. But let's have a look at the, uh, the, 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 the individual bottlings. The Barrel Reserve, I really like that. Yes, all right, it has its shortcomings. I will give you that. It is not... 100% perfect and you know if I was going to give Aaron a sort of uh, uh, an overall rating I would say B plus um, but yeah I like that I really like that I love Aaron in American Oak I would like to have seen it at 46% without filtration um, but you can't have everything can you 10 year old Okay, yep, so the batting has changed. There is now definitely some sherry cask being used in uh, that, that, that particular bottling. Um, and, well, depending on which batch you're going to get, um, you, you know, it's not bad either way. I mean, one was a bit more heavily sherry than the other, but, you know, I, I can kind of, I can, I can live with, with that. Um, the, the quarter cask... Um, I'm not loving it, as they say, and um, it, like I said, it was too much oak and not enough distillery character. And I can say exactly the same thing about the sherry cask. Uh, too much oak and not enough distillery. Oh, I just said that. Hang on. Um, <laughs> it, it, they, both of them just lacked a bit of balance at the end of the day. And yes, they are interesting, and yes, you are, they're going to be customers that love them, but for me... Mm, not not overly convinced 18 year old um i really really wanted to love it because i did like the original or the um the, the last bottling of the 18 year old that the, the, the distillery did but i just i just didn't love it at the end of the day it just was too much sherry and um not enough distillery character uh yeah, what more can I say? But the 21, the 21 was, oh, just stunning. Absolutely stunning. And that, that is just a point. And if the 18-year-old was the same kind of vatting as the 21-year-old, I would be saying the same about that. And that is exactly what I would do with the 18-year-old Aaron, you know, just dial back the sherry. Um, but then uh, I am just... Um, a, um, a humble reviewer I am not a master blender I am not Jimmy McTee or any of the other master blenders and um, maybe I should get a job as a master blender maybe I should do that you know come on anyone anyone I am for hire do you want to hire me as a blender I could probably do a pretty damn good job I think um, and uh, I would be basically telling you to get shot of all your sherry casks. Well, no, I probably wouldn't actually. But anyway, uh, anyway. So um, coming back to, uh, to to Aaron once again. Like I said, we are having an Aaron tasting evening uh, on April the twenty second. So if you are in Nottingham or uh, live in the area or will be visiting um, and fancy coming along and making your own mind up because at the end of the day this is just my personal opinion and like I said I always encourage you uh, to 
uh, taste the whiskies yourself and, and, and you know, figure out whether I'm talking bollocks or not. Oh, mm, mm, uh, talking rubbish, sorry, or not. Um, uh, anyway, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's been, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun and, um, you know, educational. You know, that's what you want from these, these kind of programmes, isn't it? You want, want to be educated um, and, uh, and, and entertained and hopefully I've done both. So anyway, <laughs> until next time, good afternoon and good dramming. Yeah.